Imagine traveling faster the speed of sound. Here it comes. Passenger aircraft can cross the sound barrier. On 28 January 2025, Boom Supersonic successfully tested its XV-1 supersonic transport airliner that crossed 1.12 Mach in air. It looks like we're in AB at Mach 0.96 uh, and 34,000 feet. This is an indication to me that we are going supersonic again once more okay. uh, on the uh, heading to the southwest, uh, back into that corridor. So very much along the same line of, as our uh, first supersonic run. The indications so supersonic. <laughs> we are now <laughs> supersonic three times on this flight. Supersonic speed was achieved and live streamed when XV-1 was at 35,000 feet altitude. The airliner intend to travel at 1.7 Mach, however it is designed to achieve a speed of 2.2 Mach. To understand simply, the speed of sound is how fast Test vibrations air travel. Air at 20 degrees centigrade or 68 degrees Fahrenheit, the speed of sound in air is about 343 meter per second or say 1125 feet per second or 1235 kilometer per hour in miles it is 767 miles per hour or in knots it is 667 knot to simplify one can travel at one kilometer in 2.91 second or one mile in 4.69 second the speed of sound depends strongly on temperature as well as the medium through which a sound wave is propagating. The objective here is to get the data and that's what uh, and that's what the team's doing. You sure it's not just Geppetto having a great day out I, there? I mean, I'm sure Geppetto's having a great day out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, 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 it's interesting because I know that um, you know Geppetto's been supersonic a lot of times in his life and uh, in his in experience with the F-18s, um, F-5s that he, he flies for Navy aggressor squadrons, etc. Um, but I, I can promise you no no time has it been more special uh, than today. And I'm pretty sure he didn't expect to get three three cracks at it. Yeah, so, you know, Mike, when I was out there at the fence line, I, I, I just took a moment just for me. I, I just watched it take off because every time that uh, we've flown uh, to date, I've been in the control room looking at data. So I had like myself a little Anakin Skywalker moment there. Let me look upon you with my own eyes. And it was it was truly emotional just to see. The history uh, was made at Moave Air and Spaceports, California, and signified the return of supersonic commercial travel, which has not been seen since the pullback of Concorde over two decades ago. The XV-1, which Boom describes as the world's first independently developed supersonic jet, took to the skies amid anticipation and excitement. Yep, there it is. Three, two, one, mark. So that's the mark for Geppetto to select the undercarriage down. Here she comes. We'll get verification from both Geppetto and the control room here. Mark, dampers on, fuel systems auto, anti-skids auto, 170. That's the landing control. checklist that they just completed. Yep. Looks like good gear, Mike. Uh, as a landing gear designer, my heart melts every time I see that gear come out. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. And this is a really special landing gear, isn't it? It is. It's, yeah, yeah it bespoke for XP-1. It was a custom gear. Earlier flight had already showcased the aircraft's capabilities with the XV-1 reaching speed of Mach 0.95 and altitude nearing 30,000 feet. Yeah, yeah, XP-1 is a, is a test aircraft and so this is a brand new system. There it is, we'll listen in. So you have glide slope centerline and then test given the uh, 1.8 fuel call. And you can see there like a difference between the angle of attack. And she's down right on the numbers. Absolutely beautiful. Right on the numbers, right on the center line. And I'm gonna turn around and watch her <laughs> roll out down the runway. What a beautiful sight and what a really successful day. Good breaks. Awesome. 
I'm getting a little bit of a flyby from the T38 and the, the Mirage F1. And so XB1, yeah, we'll continue the rollout down the runway here. You heard the good brakes call, which is always gives Nick uh, a bit of relief um, being the, the, the brakes guy at one point in time. But um, Jepet will take it really easy. He'll, he'll roll it down the runway and just let the speed bleed. But we do have to clear the runway because we have two other aircraft uh, to recover here. Both, the, both of the chase planes uh, expect to be landing here. And Geppetto's parts are right on the numbers, right outside the hangar here. And as you can see, or we can see here, people are gathering the cameras, video cameras. They're all coming back from the park line where they were watching the flight. A drone flying past the aircraft to give really good views of the whole aircraft. And I think I actually caught a smile there from Geppetto at that very moment. <laughs> And you can see the ground crew just getting to work, you know, immediately uh, securing the aircraft. Um, again, we want to maintain this as a healthy test asset, obviously. Uh, they'll do another inspection, uh, so engines are off right now, uh, mercifully. And there's that moment. I don't know if you can hear me on the mic, but uh, Geppetto just stepped out of the cockpit, uh, getting that hero shot there, coming down the ramp. And our CEO, Blake Scholl, is about to meet Geppetto uh, and shake hands uh, after a successful mission. No, I had to do it. Had to get. Had to get three of them in there for you. Three yeah. <laughs> Uh, c congratulations, you are uh, the fastest civil pilot alive. <laughs> well, thanks, Blake. Thanks for putting together this incredible team who built an incredible aircraft. Uh, she was real happy supersonic, and that's the best That's the best she's ever flown with supersonic. That's awesome. Well, congratulations, and well done. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. To many booms to come. <laughs> well, today, today is a day that Today is a day that I've been looking forward to for, for more than a decade. And it, it makes me so proud, so proud of this team, so proud of this country. America is the only place where a relatively small band of people can decide to do something and just go do it. And today, today we did. Well done. Fantastic, guys. Up here with me. Blake Scholl, the founder and CEO of Boom Supersonic, and Geppetto, who flew the aircraft today. So the dead simple question to start off with, Geppetto, is how do you feel? Uh, well, I'm not sure my brain's fully caught up with me yet. I think it might still be flying supersonic. <laughs> a little bit shaky, but just excited to be here and grateful to, uh, grateful to be a part of this team. And you enjoyed it so much, you had three goes. <laughs> Yeah, um, that was a contingency that we had briefed. Um, if we if we didn't get everything we needed on on one supersonic run, then we briefed that we'd be able to turn around and do it again. Uh, so I don't think anyone in the control room was surprised. It wasn't exactly the plan, but we had a it was a it was a backup plan. The, the history of, of flight is just such a poignant example of of how how that really works. You know, of course, the, the first airplane was built by bicycle entrepreneurs. Uh, in no way, shape, or form were the favored team or had the resume to do this. And, you know, and shortly before they, they did, you know, the, the naysayers were saying it'd be a million years before we ever had an airplane. Um, but they pulled it off. And, uh, and we had a half a century of just really steady progress and speed. Uh, we had Concorde, and then we, we kind of lost our way. Thanks for watching National Defense. Sonic Aircraft.
Chilevo. 